Should I turn that off? Oh, I got it. What is that? A video game? Yeah. Oi. Well, you don't play it? <laughs> no. Uh. No. Those aren't allowed in my house. Thank you. God, finally. You, you don't let your you don't let your boy person. you don't let your husband play video games? No. Wow. You, has he asked? He said, "Oh, we should get." Um, he thought he was gonna get like a PlayStation, whatever they are. Yeah. But for what do you mean, the whatever they are? So <laughs> he would have a PlayStation. So he would have something to do. Yeah. While he was like feeding the baby, and I'm like, like you're you're not gonna have any time. What, you can't use two hands to play a game and hold a baby. That's, like that's, yeah. your, that's his plan, though. That's my plan. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, but, but I don't about think joy, they're bad. Though? I don't think they're bad. Yeah, but anything. what about joy? You don't want to give your husband joy? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> He has plenty of joy. I know, I know. He but gets to play golf whenever he wants. Oh, he does? Yes. Yeah. Like, I'm constantly, like, kicking him out and being like, he's like, I just told them I couldn't play because I had responsibilities. And I'm like, you can go. Like, trust me, <laughs> get out. So, baby, would you rather play me play golf than play video games? Yeah, a thousand percent. Oh, oh. man. Move your body, wow. you, you fucking sedentary man. <laughs> It just wow. it just doesn't move all day. I love it. Yeah. I've never seen anybody talk to you like this. This is great. She's the only <laughs> one on the session allowed to. Only one allowed to session the don't then. Put some muzzle on me after eight p.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, wow. So I should play tennis or something. Something. I mean, anything that will where you can get some sunshine. Yeah, I don't like the D. sun though. Vitamin D is good. Help mm -hmm. combat COVID. We'll talk about another thing. Okay. But we've been you've been on our short list for I don't know why it's taken yeah, so taken. long. We only talked about her. I know. A lot. We talk about you a lot. I talked about you guys too. I had a chiropractor that we talked I talked about you every time cuz he was like such a big fan of this podcast. Is he a Chinese? Had, oh, he was Korean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why are only the Chinese big fans? Chinese chiropractors? No. Yeah. No. Not a lot of those. They have to be full doc. They have to be real doctors. Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese guys aren't allowed. To be fake doctors. The Koreans are allowed. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I smell a fart. That's him. Oh, it's not you? You can always blame it on no, the no, dog. No. no, your asshole always smells really nice. Thank you. Very clean product. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Cut this out. You can <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be Keep it this. in. Keep it in. <laughs> no. um, I can now tell the difference between, like, the dog, the man, and the baby. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I live, I've all boys in my house. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever seen your own asshole? Yes. Uh, I've never seen my own asshole. Yes, you have. And Not with my own eyes. On TV, you have, because you yeah. show it on TV. <laughs> I don't know. You don't watch yourself on TV. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it adds 10 pounds, the, you know, the oh. camera. So, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. So, I don't have that big of an asshole. Well, if you were to draw it from memory, what colors, what sh what co color crayons would you choose? <laughs> well, I'd have to use pink just because I think that that's what the inside looks that's like. That's wishful thinking. Yeah. Okay. No, that's, no, 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 that's <laughs> yeah, not. Yeah, then you think it's not Oh, stained. you think that like the shit stained the tube? No, I just think that there's a lot of friction in, it's a heavy, it's a, you know, it's a heavy I, I guarantee area. you I have a pink asshole wow. inside. I guarantee you you don't. <laughs> inside, right. I would yeah, trust her over you. Like, you what? said you've never seen it. I'm sure. No, I'm just making it. assumptions. Love, can like, I see it? Prove Honestly, it. Hey, prove it. Yeah, but okay. don't. Okay, you uh, no, can do I'll, this on the next episode. <laughs> 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 no, we're not going to show it. But what I'm saying though is, let me just defend my own asshole. Okay. Is is that um, obviously I've seen the out, you know, the entryway, the cave opening. How? It's like when you see. Okay, I'll, I'll give you an example. When you see the Bat Cave, right? Bruce Wayne's Bat Cave from afar. <laughs> It looks like a regular cave, mm -hmm. but sure. when you go inside it, something different happens. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, so that's what my asshole's like. It's full of rich, fancy things. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's like a butler. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a little white man in a fucking butler outfit <laughs> in there. Anyway, uh, let's not even talk about this right now. Okay. If it was, but keep it in. I want to say if it's mm, prolapsed, it it's pink. All right. That's also not a good thing. I don't have a prolapsed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Although, um, I've always dreamed of having one. Why? It's aspira <laughs> aspirations. Because um, I just feel like I I've always wanted a tail. Mm. You know what I mean? A rattler. Like a res uh, marsupial. Mm. A rattler, like a little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, do the countdown. Uh, here's the rules. Just the, uh, Keep all that in. Oh, there's rules. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're stuck in the buttholes. But keep all that in. Okay. We'll open with that. But oh. don't say oh. anything until I bring your name up. Okay. You're right, right, it does smell pretty bad. Oh, no, that's because he's chewing on a bull dick. No, his asshole. I know the difference between a bull dick, because I've eaten so many, <laughs> right? And the asshole. Okay, so anyway, don't interrupt me.
tukang kumur pakai cukula kalau dapat kepulu ni puru kaya sampai four a three a two can you do it in a different language this time we've done it five years six years it's fine do it in do it in Russian do you have Russian Gidrias. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Kaprva. Yeah. Verdansk. Yeah. Vladar. Vladars. Yeah, v- Vladimir. Vladimir's. Okay. And go. Hello. Uh, welcome to another episode of Tiger Belly. And um, I'm your slept king. I'm the king of this kingdom. Mm. And I'm the I'm the only ki- I'm the only the king of this kingdom. You know what I mean? It's a small kingdom. And you know, I, I have I have dreams when I go to bed. You know, I have, do you have fantasies about ruling the world? Not particularly. Yeah, yeah. I had this fantasy that I'm like the ruler of the world and what I would do. And it's magical, guys. Um, there'd be like um, buildings made out of Vicodin. Nice. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just large building where you could lick the walls, right? And it's like um, the drinking age is uh, 16. Yeah, but that's like the Philippines beats that. Okay. Well, let's move on. He's like but, Willy Wonka. Yeah, I am. Welcome to Tiger Belly. I'm your th- guy. And... Um, I have um, some people in the room that I'd like to introduce. We've got George, Jorge. George is a father. Um, our guest is a mother, but George is a father. And um, my therapist told me that I have to be nicer to you. Have you seen me be nicer to you? Okay. <laughs> fuck you, you white piece of shit. Go, go fuck your. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, that's, I'm reverting back to my old self. We'll edit that out. Now. Uh, ed- <laughs> We got Gilbert, beautiful man. Thank you. You know, when I touched you earlier, you um, you did a thing. Oh, I got g- giggly. No, no, you were like, don't touch me kind of thing. Giggly. Okay, that's giggly? Yeah. All right. We've got um, my beautiful girlfriend of almost nine years. Eight. Eight years. <laughs> <laughs> is it <laughs> overshot. Is it close to nine, though, or closer to eight? It's closer to eight. It's closer to eight. Kalila Kikun. We're starting and, to say my last name. And we have a guest today that, um, I, 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 you know, I've known her forever. This next guest, I've known her longer than I've known, like, my, you know, the people that I kind of hang. You know, she's like, she goes way back. And she is um, probably one of those uh, reliable comedians that I've used in my past. You know what I mean? In terms of, when I need help in terms of the writings. Because in the writings, right, I get flustered. You know what I mean? And there were times where I would have, I would need quick jokes, right? Because I was doing some sort of panel show, mostly Chelsea lately. And I would call this next guest and she would meet me at like either a coffee bean, right? The one over there by the Laugh Factory, right? And we would do sessions and you were so helpful. I mean, you, you, because in that time of my career, I was so desperate. I had nothing going on. And she was just one of those people that I could always rely on. And, you know, not only is she a writer, she's one of the best stand-ups in the country, I believe. And she's open for me before as well. Um, and she, um, you know, recently was the head writer for the David Spade show, Lights Out, on the Netflix. But then the pandemic hit. That went awry. Um she was uh, also a producer on the David Spade show, right? And uh, she's written on a lot of things. She's a great stand-up podcaster. She's everything. I've known her the longest. I, can't, I think she's the, one of the longest people I've known in the whole world. Sarah Tiana. Give her a run of <laughs> one of the longest, the longest people, people I've known. Know. That's How are, nice. They, you've been on a short list to do this, and I don't know why you haven't. Have we asked you before? You asked me once, I think, and I... Um, there was something going on with my family or I, I was doing something then I, and I couldn't make it. And I was so bummed because I've been, I mean, I, I love both of you. I love this podcast. I love everything you're doing. I can't believe you're actually doing a podcast <laughs> and that you've committed to something for so long. I know. Both this and Delilah. So I'm like, oh, I'm like, I have to go see this in person <laughs> yeah, so yeah. that I know it's real and it's not just an Instagram story. Yeah. <laughs> I know. But, it's, it's, you know, it's like, you know, I, there's two things that I've committed to in my life. Three things, right? I've committed to Kalila. I've committed to this podcast. I've committed to stand-up. But everything else I've never committed to. Your commitment. Like acting. <laughs> when you're filming. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, Son of no, a No, you're so good. 
I thought you would laugh at that because you would have said it first. I thought you'd be mad that you didn't say it first. That was a good jab. Yeah, no, really good jab. Yeah, yeah. No, you're so you're just like a naturally talented person. Well, you know, I think I'm just like a weird, funny guy. I guess I'm a weirdly just a weird guy. From the time, (laughs) from since you've known him the longest, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> um, have you seen an evolution or has he generally been the same person? Oh, yeah, I definitely have seen an evolution of Bobby. <laughs> I mean, when I've, I've met you 19 years ago, yeah. I was thinking Whoa. about it on the way here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, When I had first started doing stand up, and you remembered me from Mad TV because I had been like a little, I had like a little role on Mad TV when I first started. Mm-hmm. And he remembered me. And, uh, and the first week, I, I have to say, I think I did hit on you maybe. Did I hit on you? You never acted on oh, it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe you I was uh, being a little flirty I in the beginning. I just want to say that your flirty and hitting on doesn't translate to women. Like, we don't know that you're doing that. That's so rude. What but I would, I would I have been that, into it. No, but I, I, I think you're really, he's polite and he's not a yeah. creep. Right. So sometimes you're. Yeah, uh, there's always these, because uh, uh, here's what, it's because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what it is, <laughs> what, no, for me though is, what it, it's, I, I don't like being rejected. No, but the way you do it too, like I remember the first text message he sent me after our first coffee date. Yeah, yeah. Was really sweet. You said, I really enjoy hanging out with you. That's it. It wasn't like That's a. Great. Yeah. And it was simple. I was like, this is so nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does he like me? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Most yeah. guys are like, hey, let me see your nude. You know what I mean? Like, also, it's like. Send when, me a nude or. <laughs> yeah, also when I'm. And also when I make love. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm very Christian about it. I very think. Christian. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm like put the sheet on the body. Mm-hmm. Right? No, I <laughs> only cut a, in the dark. In the dark, I cut a hole through the, sh- the little sheet, right? Mm-hmm. And I go close your eyes, right? Then I close my eyes. Then I put my hands on the mattress like this. <laughs> I'll do three like very like Mormon pumps. What do you call them? Mormon pumps. Yeah, I do like three quick Mormon pumps, and I go, um, I did it. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh huh. I relieved myself inside you, <laughs> right? And then I go to sleep. You know, I'm very Christian about That's it. That's creepy. And, sorry. <laughs> hey, that really <laughs> turned creepy. The thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, I mean, I feel like... <laughs> That's not the Bobby I saw. <laughs> the bo- I mean, I thanked you in my first album. Like you were on like the cover, like uh, on the back of the cover. I thanked like three people, like my parents and Bobby. Oh, that's so funny. Because oh, you really made me that. the comedian that I like. You would make. Well, what did I do? I didn't do anything? Yes, you did. You would make people put me up when I couldn't get stage time anywhere. And yeah. whenever you did a show, you would bring me along and you would make them put me up in order for you to go up. And at the time, you were on Mad TV. I mean, it was like a big deal. Yeah. So I was like. This is the cool, like, I can't believe I know Bobby Lee, you know? And then yeah. the comedy store was like a whole different story, though. So that was. That's like, harder. Yeah. That's a harder kill. Yeah. To play. But you always gave me, always, you always gave me very blunt and good advice. And I always appreciated that. And I, I think that because, though, um, number one, at that time, would you say that it was a, a far more difficult for women? Yeah. Like, especially at the store, there was like some sexism going on, right? Was it? Yeah, there whole, was some. Yeah, some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. just a bit. Yeah, it was a, just a tad. Yeah, all it, of it. It was harder, and I just feel like you know hours. you need a champion, right? That you, you know, because yeah. I yeah. view women as like I view, I guess, a minority, maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, because in a way we are like we are a very small group that you yeah. know um, that also. I, I I would I think like back when I started too like there wasn't really a, a space for you as a woman to be like to have like a, a lane like and now I feel like certain like women have different lanes like some women are sexual some women are not sexual some are you know sporty like me you know like whatever it is and or a lesbian you know like they can talk about being married or you know I felt right. like there weren't a lot of lanes like it kind of felt like we were all kind of a broad stroke of each other. Yeah, and but so I feel like you fit in though more with the guys though. Yeah, I think in, in a weird way. Well, also I remember when I started, like all the women I knew in stand up who no longer do it, so uh, were just like, "Don't go to the comedy store; it's so hard. They they hate women there." And I was like, "I wish you wouldn't have told me that because now that's the only place I want to go up. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the competitor in me." And so I would actually Chelsea gave me the best advice. She was like, "Just go, be funny, and leave." Oh, and Chelsea Handler? Yeah, yeah. Eventually, you'll be funny enough, they'll ask you to stay. And that's yeah. exactly what happened. I wasn't trying to, like, 
be like hang out and be everybody's friend. I just went and I was funny and I would leave. And then I ended up dating a comic there. And I think that also helped because Who was it? At the, that was Aaron Cater. Oh, yeah, that's right. Aaron. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So and at the time, then the Axis of Evil started and they were doing really doing well. well yeah. 9-11 had happened and everybody knew what an Arab was. And so like, <laughs> you know, it was like all of a sudden it became kind of cool, like five years later anyway. Right, right. You know. I betrayed him back then because um, I did the same thing I did for you, mm-hmm. whereas I got him on a show called K Loco, mm-hmm. and he had, he hadn't done a TV spot yet. I'm I'm making an I don't amends. This. I'm a, yeah, you don't know about this. I don't really talk about it, but I'm making amends right now. <laughs> you know, in, on my podcast. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Aaron. <laughs> so what happened was he goes, I need a TV tape. I go, you know what? They asked me to do K Loco, which is was on Telemundo, and I said I called them and I said I won't do it because I'd already done it three times. Mm. If, unless you put my friend on. So the, it was sh- being shot at the Ice House. <laughs> and, oh, wow. and, and Joey Diaz was the host or whatever. And so we're all in the green room. And I had already gone up. And um, Joey brings up Aaron Cater. And Aaron walks up. And you see it on the monitor. He, he doesn't say anything. Oh, no. oh, what do you mean? No. Aaron doesn't yeah. say anything? Oh. You could see that like he's a deer in headlights. Oh, wow. Yeah. It like... And then he opened his mouth and nothing came out for like maybe 30 seconds. What? Oh my God. Right? I've never known him to not know, say anything ex- ever. I know. <laughs> He's always I know. like very it vocal. Shocking. It was shocking. Yeah. Right? Too vocal sometimes. And I remember a comic in the back of me, I don't know who it was, said out loud, oh no. <laughs> right? Right? Which is like, and Which then everyone could hear because there's no one else talking. <laughs> right? I know. And now I'm sweating. Oh God. Right? And I'm feeling so bad. And I'm going, come on, man, come on. You know what I mean? And then as soon as he opens his mouth, you could just tell that he completely lost control yeah. of the room. And um, so what happens at the, you know, you, you, sh- you have three comics go on. Then all the comics go up on stage, waves goodnight, and then they start another show, right? So that, you know, they shoot like six of them oh. or eight of them night. So after his set, he got off and then the host brought two comics back on stage and not him oh. to say goodnight. And then he wanted to go home, but I had left him there. I drove him there. <laughs> you left him? Wow. Bro, what? <laughs> Be better. That teaches you a lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's like hardcore parenting. Yeah, That's so how that yeah, kill, you kill or, or <laughs> you, oh, you get left behind. Yeah, the oh, ice house. Oh. The ice house is not close. It's yeah, it's not ice close. House is in it's far, far away. 20 miles from LA. <laughs> yeah, right. So I guess he had to wait to the end of the night. And then Joey Diaz drove him home. Oh, of course wow. Joey would. Yeah, yeah. And um, I feel so bad. But then um, here's, can I just say, the redemption of it mm-hmm. was a year later, I was just clicking on the television and I saw a premium blend. Blend. Right? Mm-hmm. I saw him on that and he killed. Killed. And I, in my head, I'm like, maybe that was good for him. It was. Do you I'm think sure. it was? I do. Hey, guys, we're going to take a really quick break to share two of our favorite sponsors with you. Come. I, I honestly like I, I I without this app I would not be able to sleep. It's what I listen to uh, when I meditate. It's what I listen to when I go to bed at night. Um, it really is the best uh, app when it comes to meditation and, mm-hmm. and and whatnot. Also, if you're feeling a little more blue than usual or need a mental reset, it's the perfect time to give Calm a try. We're partnering. We're partnering with Calm because it's the number one mental wellness app and it gives you the tools that improve the way you feel. Exactly what you're saying. You clear your head with guided daily meditations. That's what it is. Improve your focus with Calm's curated music tracks and drift off to dreamland with Calm's imaginative sleep stories. I love those stories. It's the favorite part of my day. I brush my teeth. I take a shower, put my pajamas on. I sit in bed and I do the Mm -hmm. 10 minute guided meditations to help me sleep. And if you go to com.com slash belly, you'll get a limited time offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription, which includes hundreds of hours of programming and new content and new content is added every week. For listeners of the show, Calm is offering a special limited time promotion of 40% off a Calm premium subscription at com.com slash belly. Go to com slash belly for 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library. That's com.com slash belly. Sleep more, stress less, live better with Calm. Rome. Man. <sighs> hey guys oh my god i've been waiting all day to tell you guys big news yeah your favorite men's healthcare brand roman 
is now available at Walmart. Oh my god! Oh my god! Roman's non-prescription products have got you covered with everything from sexual health to everyday health. Roman condoms are now new and exclusive to Walmart. You won't find them anywhere else. Designed ultra thin, lubricated for pleasure, and FDA cleared because safe is sexy. And I love you know I, I talk about the swipes all the time because I own them. Roman swipes work, and they're an easy, discreet way to delay ejaculation. Because you want to d- delay d- d- agents <laughs> And increase sexual stamina. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're fast acting and your partner will enjoy them too. No pass along desensitization if you if you use as intended. And I can vouch for this because it is I've never felt anything from it. Yeah, yeah, Guys, also don't forget the dietary supplement. Doctor formulated with 23 nutrients, Roman Daily is a multivitamin that is optimized with ingredients to support men's health and overall well-being. Roman's teams of in-house doctors created this unique, high-quality supplement to target nutrition gaps in men with scientifically backed ingredients in ingredients and dosages once again guys visit your local walmart store today and check out roman's line of men's health care products that's roman's men health care products now at walmart enjoy the rest of the show i yeah. do think that, that yeah. would. i think that would be good for anybody because when you care about comedy and you fail like that you're like this is never happening again all right and you do everything in your power to make sure that Wait, have you happens. failed miserably before yeah in, in like in a, in a high pressure situation? Very high pressure situation, yeah. Like what happened? Uh, so it was Nashville. So uh, at the time, I was working at the Four Seasons, and because uh, that's where I waited tables. Wait, like, in Beverly Hills? Yeah. That's Did you ever work with Sebastian? Oh, yeah. We would have lunch together. Like he would leave and go to the comedy store on his breaks. I worked at the pool, but he worked in the lounge. Oh, Sebastian downstairs. worked at the Four Seasons too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, as a waiter. We yeah. worked there together, yeah. yeah. He was able to leave earlier than I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, just like in life he he did much better but uh <laughs> i met this country music singer there and at the time their band was huge uh they were called big and rich they're a huge I country band and yeah so they're save huge. a horse ride a cowboy mm-hmm. had just came out and john rich comes in and he hears my accent and he's like where are you from and i was like oh i'm from georgia and he said are you an actress i said I'm a comedian. And he goes, I love comedy. I said, I know you ordered a Chardonnay. And then I just like kept walking. <laughs> That's funny. And he was like, <laughs> he's like, did you ever write? Like he just, we just kept talking for like the whole lunch, you know? And then he said, do you ever write jokes about country music artists? And I was like, oh yeah, that's like my thing. <laughs> I mean, I had never written yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so yeah. he's like. You have to, you have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There they are. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. he's like. Send me some jokes, you know? And so I sent him a joke every day for a year. Because oh, wow. I did wow. not want him to forget about me. Because I love country music. You email, you email, emailed him a joke. email him every day for a year. Yeah. That was when Hotmail existed, you know? So I sent <laughs> it to his Hotmail account. Yeah. And, uh, and so for his 33rd birthday, he, brought, he flew me out to Nashville. He put me up so that I could tell all these jokes that I had written to all of his friends. He rented oh. out this huge bar on Broadway, which I think he was part owner of. There were probably like two, three hundred people there. And he has me go up and tell all these jokes. So basically I was roasting this before the roasts were on TV. Like I didn't really even know I was roasting. I just went up there to tell jokes. And the very first joke I said, I was like, oh, I see Kix Brooks from Brooks and Dunn. I go, oh my gosh, Kix, huge fan. But I can never remember which one is Brooks, which one is Dunn, which one actually has the mustache, which one doesn't, which one actually tames the white tigers, and which one doesn't do magic at all. I always forget. You know, I'm like, yeah. silence. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, because I also didn't have a lot of like confidence oh, right? right I'm nervous right. you know I'm like 27 yeah probably, you yeah, know? yeah yeah I'm like <laughs> and I go you didn't like that joke and he goes no oh go, well maybe I didn't tell it right I'll tell it again <laughs> <laughs> I told it again did you really and this time because I you said, have to be defiant right you and have so to be defiant I was like and then I end I I added a tag to it I was like it's just easy to remember y'all are lovers because you can't uh, be together for 20 years and not at least make out on the red dirt road. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the name of their house. Yeah. And I mean, the band started playing cricket noises. Like it didn't matter oh. what I said. Oh. Ryan McKnight went up after me because him and John wrote that song. One, you're like a dream come oh. true. Ryan right. McKnight was there. Yes. Yeah, so he was so performing random. after me. <laughs> so yeah. random. Oh yeah. And I like, and he's he makes a comment about how he has to clean up the mess I left. On <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, one person is dying laughing, and it's Tanya Tucker. 
I love. She's a legend. Yeah, she's oh, yeah, a, yeah, she's, a a legend. Le- she's like the only you know, yeah, like woman admitted into like the bad boys club of Nashville, right? Yeah. Like, she, and so she comes up to me at the bar, you know, smoking a cigarette, and she's like, "I thought you were fucking hilarious," <laughs> yeah. and then she like made out with me and like kissed me for no reason. <laughs> No reason. Why, 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 why? She's just like, you're amazing. It's hilarious. You know, yeah. fuck all these dumbass, you know? Yeah. It's so great. Well, so we were at the, when you were at the bar, did you, were you just in your own head? I mean, oh, yeah. That I must was like, awful. I, I thought I, it was just like a mess. I was like, he's never going to talk to me again, you know? And he thought it was the most hilarious thing. He was like, I'd have you go right back up there and do it again. I was like, <laughs> I'm never performing again for the rest of my life. <laughs> oh, wow. But yeah. uh, I was like, I'm never going to let that happen to me again. And then... I, you know, stay. He just, he's like, he won Celebrity Apprentice. Like, he's a very big businessman. He just loved my work ethic. So he would bring me to Nashville every year after that. And I always performed at his house because he has like a 250 seat bar in his house with a big stage and all this stuff and uh, a, sh- a pool that's shaped like a guitar. Like, it's insane. And so <laughs> I would come out there and perform. I would do like, you know, uh, these dirty joke nights that him and Mel Tillis would host. And like, I performed there for seven years before Zanies ever booked me. Wow. And then I saw Kix Brooks again and I told him that joke seven years later. He thought it was hilarious. And now he's one of my very good friends. Oh. Yeah. yeah I like, you know, I yeah. go to Vegas and watch him perform. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of crazy how it comes full circle. Like, it, it, that's the thing about you, though, is that you, you I, I remember you being tenacious. Mm-hmm. Right, and you just won't wouldn't quit. Nope. You're you like you worked so hard. There's a couple of people like that where I can just think of. It's somebody. There's another girl out there that you know who Helen Hong is. I love Helen. Yeah, yeah. She's I hire another, her for stuff on our Netflix show. Oh, really? I love her yeah, work yeah, ethic as well. Yeah, yeah. She, it's her work ethic. It's like, you know, when I did my sitcom, they're like, "Oh, Helen Hong is your sister in the show." Mm-hmm. She showed up and. You know, she was somebody that wasn't really ever on my radar, mm-hmm. but that was the day when I went. I just memorized, you know, her, you know, her face, her name. I put her in um, my world in terms of like who I respect, like like a Margaret Cho. Like mm-hmm. she is somebody that I just went into to myself. This chick has because I remember when she was starting, mm-hmm. and it just you were just kind of like uh, you know what I mean, and then. She just wouldn't quit, mm-hmm. and I just I love fucking that shit, man. Yeah, I you're mean, one of them. You're just well, wouldn't nice. quit. You well, know? that's the secret to comedy: not quitting. Is that it? It really is, honestly. Like if you just hang around long enough and keep doing it, yeah, be it, good. It, there was this guy <laughs> named Joey Marmo who I started with. This Jewish guy, uh-huh. and you remember him? People know. And I did open mics with them, and then he one day just went, "Fuck this! I'm going back to North Carolina." I go, "Why?" <laughs> I'm going to work at my dad's insurance. You know what I mean? So he went out. I don't know where he I think it was North Carolina. And then he started a family. He had eight kids. I don't know what he... And then literally two years ago, I see him at the open mic. What? Yeah. And I go, Joey? Yeah, I came back. <laughs> and I go... Nice. Because I came back and I go, why? You guys see you guys all killing it. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And I'm, you know, and I'm like, I wanted to tell him, I go... It's it's too late. Mm-hmm. You know? Is it too late though? Do you think it's too late? I, I because I'll tell you why. I, I'll t- I'll tell you why I think that I have been successful. Okay. It's because I was there when you were starting. I was there when Sebastian Moscow. Everyone was starting. I grew up grew up with people, and now I'm the jobs that I'm getting is all because of my history. Right. It's yeah. it's because of all the things that I've done. It's because of all the work that I continue to do. And I think that that has a lot to do with it. You know, it's like, you know, who you know is, you know, when they say that, it kind of is true. Oh, it's all about that. Yeah. See, you guys this have never bit. even so much as taken like a six month break and said, you know what, like, I just need a moment to recalibrate, figure out if this is really what I want to do. Or have you always just pushed and pushed and pushed? Yeah, until quarantine, until we weren't allowed to. (laughs) I I, I I never stopped. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had to stop when I was super pregnant because I would run out of breath. I couldn't breathe. I was so fat. I gained like 70 pounds. I couldn't breathe. The baby was huge. And like that was the only reason I had to take a break. Yeah. And then quarantine made me take a longer one. But 
No. Yeah, but in the 19 years I've known you, you've always been around. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's kind of it. But like, that's also like. I just knew I like once I started, I was like, man, I, I really enjoy writing jokes for other people. I started realizing that about, I don't know, 10 years in, you know, and I was just like, I enjoy performing myself, but I, it's much more rewarding for me to write a joke in someone else's voice and like see them perform that and then that be good. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just really enjoyed that. And so that's how I got into the roast too, it was because I, I would let Jeff perform at my, uh, Jeff Ross, I would let him perform at this room that I ran. And finally, I saw him at a birthday party once, and I was like, what's the next roast you're doing? And he said, he told me that, like, it was like Quentin Tarantino, it was like some charity thing, and I said, what's your email? And he gave me his email, and I just sent him jokes every day until he just couldn't ignore me anymore. <laughs> wow. And then he was like, okay, come over. And I, and he's like, it's not, I'm, It's this isn't like a paid gig. And I was like, you don't have to pay me. Just remember me for a gig. Just yeah. think about me when someone needs somebody for a gig. That's all it is. I remember when the roast battles first started mm -hmm. on those Tuesday nights. Remember the first time you saw Sarah go up? Yeah, yeah. And you came Would home you, and you were like, holy. Did you, you go did, up? You did. Yeah, I did though. Yeah, yeah, did. Yeah, it was yeah. in the beginning, right? Yeah. In the beginning, yeah, yeah, yeah. You came home and you were like, holy <laughs> Shit. Yeah, yeah. You gotta go Tuesdays at midnight. That was the <laughs> wildest thing I'd ever seen. I did not want to do those. Like, yeah. Brian Moses like kept pushing me, and I was like, and I was the first person that would judge. I would judge them to start. I yeah. was always a judge, and and everyone on and the judges kept thinking they were roasting them too, and I'd yeah. be like. Man, that joke would have been so good if you had just taken the middle and, or if you had taken the end and made it more of a beginning or put some head on that joke. Yeah. If you had said it like this, it would have worked. So I became more of just like, I became like, oh man, it just, it's all math to me. So I'm just like, oh, it's like a word problem. I'm just constantly rearranging words and trying to figure out how they work best together. And then they kept pushing me and pushing me to like do, and I'm like, nobody wants to see me. Like, I'm too nice. Like, nobody wants to see that. And then <laughs> yeah. like, it just worked out yeah. like, to where, and then they started using me for when they were pitching the show. So like, yeah. they'd have me and Ralphie roast each other for, um, you know, Russell Simmons would come, like at the time they wanted HBO to buy it. So then he would come in and I would just like roast the shit <laughs> and my yeah. thing was I was always like super prepared I would do tons and tons of research but mm -hmm. my thing with roasting was like I'm not trying to hurt your feelings like I'm, I'm trying to impress you I want to write a joke that you want to use for right. your, on yourself yeah. you know like I'm not I'm not you know it's not I'm not going to say anything that is malicious that yeah. you wouldn't you know I want to say something that's clever and interesting that you would mm. want to use in your act yeah. and so that's kind of what helped me be good at that like for a roast battle Anyway. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's also the reason why, you know, obviously I needed you in every situation that I had. I would call you because of the fact that, like, you know, I mean, you're great on stage, but I also knew that you're just a great writer as well. You know what I mean? You right. just had that, that head and that brain to do it. Did you go up against Tiffany? Yeah. I remember. Oh, yeah. She yeah, that was Tiffany what... and Annihilated. Remember, yeah. you were like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I said, I remember saying, because it didn't feel like she wrote anything. And I remember <laughs> yeah, yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. Tiffany, did you weave your jokes out? <laughs> <laughs> and, she, and oh yeah. boy, yeah. Yeah, because a lot of these people, like, you know, um, that have personalities think that they can just show up. Right. Right. And oh, use... Ralphie was exactly like that. He'd yeah. be like, I'm just going off the dome, Sarah. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. All right. Good luck with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but it's like the precision of your jokes, right? Yeah. Would oh, the precision would always win. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean, just the way, yeah. you know what I mean? Just the setup and the harsh switch or whatever it was, you know, it was like, it's just something that I, I never tried out of fear because I just, Maybe I just don't know how to write that way, or I, I think can be it's a mean. Talent, though, but I can be mean. Yeah, no, but she, you see it as a mathematical equation. Yeah, it, that's how her brain reads it, and that's how her brain is able to put it on paper. Like, yeah. yeah, I really think that that's a talent. I think it's also easier for me because I don't have a lot of like demons or anything. So like, you also have to be able to be roasted. Uh, that's the other part. I'm not just roasting people and not getting it in return. I'm also getting it in return. So it's like. It's not like I, I've never, you know, been to AA, you know what I mean? Like, I don't have, like, a past that, like, people could really dig into. Yeah, and right. So I knew that, you know, they were just going to make whore jokes about me. And so I was very <laughs> prepared for that because that's not who I am at all, you know? Yeah. I'd be like, oh, whenever they would, I would have tons of comebacks for those jokes that I knew were coming. Mm -hmm. And I would 
you know, try and annihilate them based on their laziness. <laughs> like if you knew, I remember like, I remember roasting Big Poppy who, uh, when he re- retired from the yeah. Red Sox. Yeah. David Ortiz. You know Big Poppy. Yes. I, know, I know him. Yes. You have a so, story about that. You know what he did one time? Oh, no. He went up to Big Poppy thinking that Big Poppy <laughs> was Manny Ramirez. Oh, dear. No, no, no. I didn't know. I, so <laughs> Wait. Did and Manny play for the Dodgers? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Late Manny. So Big oh, pa- late Manny. Biggie Poppy. Um, <laughs> Biggie, Biggie Poppy yeah. did that show Game On, which that was oh, you know, right. right. Oh. So I kept calling him Manny. Oh. Right? And then he just won. He just kind of, because all day long it called, because I didn't know. I, no, that's what you did. You <laughs> called me and you were like, babe. This guy, um, Manny, he's like a really famous baseball player. You love baseball. Come over here. And when I got on set, I was like, that's not Manny. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's David Ortiz. Yeah, and same. eventually he goes, hey, I'm not Manny. <laughs> right? He grabbed me and I was like, oh, fuck, my bad. I don't know. But that's so funny because David Ortiz notoriously called his teammates the wrong names forever. <laughs> like, he yeah. also, he like... Dustin Pedroia, like who played second base for that, like yeah. he called him Pee Wee, like for like six years. <laughs> yeah, and then he heard the umpire like calling him David, and he's like, "What?" Or Dustin, what I call call you Dustin? And he's like, "That's my name." He's like, "Oh, I thought it was Pee Wee." <laughs> no, not Pee Wee. Oh, oh, you know, so I don't feel bad. No, Wait, what yeah. was your thing about um, David Ortiz? So. Well, they did. I was the only woman on the roast. It was like Gronk was there, who I know did that show yeah. with you as well. You know, and uh, and they literally just called me a whore for like, and I was like, you guys. Um, you guys have, are giving me a lot of credit. That was the first thing I said. I was like, my list of sexual partners is a lot like Dustin Pedroia. It is embarrassingly short. <laughs> yeah, like, that's, yeah, yeah. Like, let me go. Wow. You know what I mean? But that was. I funny. should do r- research. That's yeah, that's. <laughs> that's what I, I think. That's the, the because I, did I tell you about the I told you about the commercial I did right. No. Which commercial? So I did a commercial a long time ago, and I was doing it with these two old men. Right, mm-hmm. and I thought these two old men were because they didn't have any lines really, and I go, they're extras. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> oh, yeah, in my head, I'm yeah. like, they're have, oh, they have to be extras. I'm, I'm afraid right. I'm the this one is going to actually make you so make you rageful, rageful. Um, it's gonna make recoil. You, it's gonna yeah. make you. So you know, and also I'm I just got into SAG, and also I I was getting like that year I got like twelve national commercials. Jesus. So in my head I'm like I'm the king of you know what I mean commercials. I can be. Me, right? <laughs> I could be me, right? Like, so, like um, I would go, Hey, go get me a Diet Coke to the old man, to the old man. Mm. And you would be like, oh, All right, you know, I mean, go to the oh. crafters, you know, what I mean? get me pretzels, <laughs> oh my god. Ever, right? Oh my god, and at the end, <laughs> this is so embarrassing. And at the end, and then at the end of the shoot, they start having dialogue. So, because they shut the first part, right? They shot me. And then, so they had some dialogue. I'm like, oh, they aren't, they're not extras. And then at the end, somebody came up to me and goes, what was it like working with two legends? I go, what, those two old men? <laughs> and they go, yeah. I go, who are they? He goes, Gordy Howe and Stan Mikita, who are hockey legends, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I mean, these guys are like, you know what I mean? The Babe Ruth. <laughs> Gordy you know Howe I mean? has like so many records. Like, <laughs> I know. And then they had already gone because I wanted to apologize. Oh mm-hmm. yeah! No, I did. I wanted to apologize. How would you apologize to a hockey player? <laughs> <laughs> no, just say, hey, I, I, you know, you know, I'm sorry. I made you kick me a dark hook. I, you, I thought you were just nice. Right? I'm so sorry. You know, it's something, right? <laughs> but they had already gone in their limos away, oh, and then you know, and also when you make a mistake like that, you just spent the whole next week just laying in bed just, <laughs> and just like going, you're just blushing. You should just be so grateful that they didn't beat the shit out of you. That's <laughs> I know. like their whole job as hockey players. <laughs> just like throwing. You're right, out. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I just make mistakes like that all the time. And it's like, I should just do research mm-hmm. or look at the call sheet and go, <laughs> you know what I mean? Gordy. And just Google. No, I, but am, I, yeah. I do that for you now. She does it now. Oh, that's nice. I, I'm, I get secondhand embarrassment. Uh-huh. No. <laughs> I believe that. that. Deep. I mean, the worst thing was honestly yeah. when Big Poppy was on set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as soon as I saw his face, I was like, has he been calling him Manny? <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Like my heart sank. Yeah, well, that, yeah, for that. Remember when I went up to him, I was like, hey, Big Poppy, nice to meet you. And I, I, I pretend like I didn't know you at all. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know yeah. this guy. Go to Bobby. Give me some pretzels, man. <laughs> yeah. I do remember that. But it's like, yeah, with that show especially, like I had to then kind of show up and go, who are these athletes? Mm-hmm. Because it's like, you know, you were always, you're an athlete. You love sports. Mm-hmm. I only like specific ones. 
Like I know about MMA. Mm -hmm. I know about soccer. And that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. Like you don't have to know about everything. Like that's fine. I don't think athletes get offended. You know, you should know their name if you're working with Oh, no, no. (laughs) No, because me and... um, Gronk, uh-huh. you know what I mean? He texts me. I mean, Did we're friends. Did you know Gronk before you met Gronk? What? <laughs> Did you know Gronk, Gronk definitely doesn't remember Gronk. people's names without no. CTE. Well, he told me. Well, do you think he's got CTE? <laughs> I mean. Uh, there's got to be. I mean. No, he looked at me once just out of nowhere and he goes, I never read a book. <laughs> That's what he said out of nowhere. But he's written too. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. He's written too? Yeah. Ghost writers, right? Uh, I mean, for yeah, sure. For sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But he, I think he's just a special kind of genius. Maybe one that doesn't, you know, read on paper as a genius. But not only that, he, you can also s- feel his heart. Yeah. yeah. And you just know, as soon as you meet him, you go, oh, he's a good guy. He really, he's just yeah. a nice kind of a good mm-hmm. guy. He, his team were really nice people. You know, I also liked um, um, Venus. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's Venus Williams right. was also on it. And... Uh, you never watch tennis either? Well, I know who the Williams are. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? I know who... Let me see if I can name... <laughs> you, guys should, you guys should go back and forth and name tennis players. And you know? Wait, name five, uh, five I'll NFL name one players. and you name one. Five NFL players. No, no, no. Uh, tennis is harder. T- let's just start that. So let's, whoever runs long. out loses. So <laughs> here we go. Do. I'm going to start. Beyond Bork. Beyond Bork, this old... You're going thing. old school. I know, but any tennis player, right? Okay. okay. Yeah. Novak Djokovic. There we go. John McEnroe. I, that's his, Why do you go the old... I had to, that's all I know. McEnroe. <laughs> John, John McEnroe. Yeah, I, I'll give you clues, but I won't give it. Redhead. I don't, no, don't, don't do that. that <laughs> German redhead. Don't do that. Don't oh, do that. Don't do that. I think right. of like... Yeah. I can't even... Like now I have to think of like Serena Williams. It, yeah. There you go. There yeah. Okay, so... Serena. You can't say the Williams. We just said the Williams. <laughs> no, but you said Venus. You said... Oh, you said... All right, so you say Serena. That I'm gonna say Billie Jean King. Oh, oh that's a good one. Billie yeah, Jean yeah. King ones, one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I think I said. You said just say all the guys that Djokovic played against, <laughs> which is yeah, lucky. yeah. I mean, uh, Spain, Spain, Fe- Spain. Federer. Federer. There you go. That was the one I was gonna say just now. <laughs> Roger, Roger Federer. <laughs> uh, no, no, don't do, do don't don't do this. The Spaniard. Just the Spaniard. The number one Spaniard. Looks like Andres, kind of. I don't know. Uh, he always wins Raf- the French Open on Rafael play. Rafael dos Santos. <laughs> <laughs> hey, half a point. Nadal. Half a point. Uh, Rafael dos Santos. Uh, Close enough. Uh, 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 Nadal. 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 Oh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Never. Yeah. All right, let, me try, let me do football. Let me try football. Oh, five. Yeah. Let me try five. Try your best. Current in the, or in just? Yeah, I I, I have to go the whole thing. I already know who you're gonna say first. No, no, you're you gonna know. say Junior Seau because he's from San Diego. That's right. Junior Seau. Junior Seau. Right. Whole San Diego. I got this. Um. Um. Oh, fuck. I should, I should be- oh, no, no, I got Refrigerator Perry. Good one. Do you know how Chicago I know that? Bears? How? Because I used to play Tecmo Bowl. Uh, <laughs> when it was like a digital. Yeah. And I was, because I don't know anybody in, in Tecmo Bowl, but Re- Refrigerator Perry was this gigantic brown. <laughs> like all the players were this, but then the, he was like this big. Yeah. I go, who the fuck is this one? And then I looked it up. So Richard, Fri- Refri- G- Jerry Rice. Yes. Nice. Yeah, Jerry one. Rice, right. Um, great. He drinks a lot of Tyrone drink. Owens. Tyrone? Ty- Tyrell, Tyrell? Tyrell Owens. Tyrell. But they're probably Tyrell. 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 from Denver Broncos. Tyrell. T- Tyrell. Tyrell Owens, Ben Denver Broncos. Tyrell. 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 Whatever, Tyrell. whatever. It's like Tyron. In the streets, it's called Tyrell. Mm-hmm. So, no, it's, there's no I, Y. It's T. Tyrell. <laughs> Tyrell. 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 Oh, Tyrell. Like Daryl, but with a T. All right. He played for the Denver Broncos. He's running back. Oh, right? um, no. Wide receiver. Right receiver? Wide receiver, yeah. Oh, he also played fuck. for Dallas, Dallas. right? He oh, has a four? You have one more. Okay, um. You know quarterbacks? You got to know quarterbacks. Uh, no, I don't. Hold Could on. Can you name I'll... any modern quarterback? I'm curious. Uh, yeah. Uh, like... Can you name any modern quarterback? <laughs> you, I'm curious. You, no, I'm Go you fuck use... yourself. Can you name don't ever talk to me like that before. again. Could you name a modern Peyton? quarterback? Okay, give it here. Oh. Pa- first name, Patrick. Patrick Payton. <laughs> you know what? Peyton, Half a point. Two, Half point. point. Those are two first names. Uh, okay. Of quarterback. Peyton first. Manning. Name. Okay. Yeah. Peyton, Peyton Manning. Is, mm. What? His brother. Roger Manning. <laughs> uh, hey, love it. <laughs> hey, I like it. Fuck you. I like man. it. No, you don't. <laughs> Roger. Manning. He played for New York. Oh, how about this? Can you name me ten soccer players? Ooh. No. Ooh. Five soccer players in the history of soccer. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. Five. Be- Beckham. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh. Uh, <laughs> hold on. I'm seeing them in my head. I'm not very good with okay. names. Uh, Describe them too. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Hold on. Hold on. Back Megan, Megan Rapino. 
Oh, oh, oh yeah. No, all right, you want to go pee? Oh, all right. There, she plays. Are they not soccer players? Yeah, she is. She plays. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, Abby Weinbach. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna go there. <laughs> Yeah. You're gonna go, right? Well, Abby Weinbach. Uh, Hope Solo. Yeah. <laughs> That's so not fucking fair for the girl. The girl is, from. No, no, no. You can't even. Because she's, she's going from to here. Women's. She's going to women's. Yeah. Go ahead. Four. That's four. Go ahead. <laughs> she just had uh, a baby. Oh, yeah. I'm just trying to think. Yeah. She just had um, twins, right? Or, um, man, I can't think. I'm trying to think of uh, Messi. Okay. Oh, oh little messy. messy. Oh, that was very good. Yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo. Ronaldo, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He was one of my number. I waited when I worked at the Beverly Hills Hotel. He like lived there when he was rehabbing his ankle, and so I like worked with him every day. No, I waited on him every day. Was he nice? Oh, so nice. Handsome. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. He has like the most perfect skin. Oh, he has my really God. good skin he and has like beautiful skin. So many girls, so many girls, oh, like man. just would l- like swim slowly over to his side of the pool because he was always in a cabana, like a private cabana, and he, God. he was wow, yeah. How long was there? Is they there for? Oh, uh, over a month. Any other soccer players hang out there? I wouldn't have known them. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was always really interesting. Like, um, I remember my favorite, not favorite, but one of the craziest customers I had forever was Suge Knight. Wow. <laughs> and I remember, like, I would bring, he like, always liked the barbecue chicken pizza, no onions. And uh, he would disappear for hours at a time. And I'd be like, <laughs> I need Mr. Knight to sign his check. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I can't leave until he signs his uh, check. Oh, wow. Because I knew it was going to be at least 100 bucks. You know? Yeah, yeah. And so, oh, I'd wait and wait and wait. And then uh, I remember one night I was in West Westwood, like, and I had, like, I had been shopping. I had like a gap bag, you know, like all like clothes. And he gets out of an Escalade with like seven dudes. And I stop and I go, oh, Mr. Knight. And I like wave, <laughs> like a total white girl wave. Like, <laughs> Mr. White. Like, like, Mr. Knight. Like hi. a presidential. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. Just like eager. Like, like, oh. you're just, like when you see somebody that you know from far away and you're like, hey. <laughs> I've never done that before. <laughs> well, that's what I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm very cheery. I don't know if you've noticed, but tell yeah. me he recognized you. He had he just like and I was like right, and I just like turned around. <laughs> oh, all right, like, yeah, this yeah. This is not the right situation. <laughs> and then I saw him at the comedy store a couple of times, and he did remember me there. Oh, he did. Yeah, he'd be like, "You want to come hang out with us?" And I'm like, "No, thanks, sir. <laughs> I'm not going to be tonight's stuff store. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm good. Because right, w- did you wait on famous people that didn't tip? I don't want to name names, but. Uh, ever... It was usually only like the British people that did that. Uh, you know what I they mean? They don't know culturally. Yeah, that's just not a custom there. So like you knew there were lots of like there were tons of celebrities. There was one guy that I remember coming one time and he had a, a silver one of those silver hardback suitcase like briefcases and he had it handcuffed to him. And he was drinking like double gray goose on the rocks with James, extra it was James lime. Bond? James Bond? I, he was attractive, but he was hanging out the jacuzzi. And every time you walked past him, he would give you 50 bucks. Damn. Wow. So I walked past him a lot. And and then I ended up like try, just like trying to figure out like what was going on with him. And his <laughs> wife had left him for another guy and was trying to take all his money. And so he took all the money out of the bank and put it in that briefcase. Wow. And he was like, meet me in my room later tonight and we're, I'm going to Paris and you'll never have to worry about anything for the rest of your life. And I always think like, man, if I had done that, what would have happened? Like, where would my life be? You know? <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Would right. I be doing this podcast? Is he handsome? <laughs> Yeah, he was handsome. Yeah, 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 yeah. He wasn't. He wasn't incredibly handsome, but yeah. he was like handsome enough. Did you consider it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think there's a little part of you that goes, and then you what? go, no, no, no. <laughs> like yeah, this can't I... be a good situation to get into. Yeah, you could either be royalty or dead. Right. At the end of that exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's fifty fifty. Fifty fifty. Yeah. Speak, yeah. Like the fifty dollar bills he was handing. If he's out. crazy enough to handcuff the briefcase to him all uh-huh. day. Yeah crazy enough to but it clearly like somebody that. was going to be looking for that money because that wasn't technically <laughs> legally yeah. all his yeah how long did you work there the four seasons i worked there for like two or three years and then took a break and then went to the beverly hills hotel you worked there as well for five years oh my oh. god four years or something yeah for a long time and like it was great because i got tons of free hotel nights at oh, those hotels oh, wow, wow. around the world. So I would be new comic on the road. You know, I was the MC at like the funny farm in Atlanta, you know? Yeah. And they're like, we can't put you up. And I'm like, don't worry, I got hotel night. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's oh, so, wow. you know, really? the headliner would be at the Marriott and I'd be at the Four Seasons. Oh, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> so people thought I was like some rich kid, you know, and like, but everyone was always really nice. Now, can, can we talk about um, so sorry, your baby? Yeah, sure. Cage. I never, that's your baby's name? Cage. Cage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great name. Like what Nicholas a, Cage. Oh, it's a, yeah, I know what Cage well, is. Well, I'm just saying, like some people say, you know, they call him like Is ga- it based Gage. on Cage. Nic- is it based on Nicolas Cage? It's from, we, we were watching the baby naming sketch on SNL to come, try and come up with a name. Uh-huh. And it's it's Nicolas Cage and Julia Sweeney. And so the old the head writer at Lights Out was like, have you ever seen the baby naming sketch? Because he used to write on SNL. And I was like, no. And I watched it. I thought it was so funny. And then I came home that night and I showed my boyfriend and he's like, Cage is a cool name. And we wanted a C name or a B name. Ah. So that the, he would have the same initials as my boyfriend. Oh, wow. And so... Yeah, I was like, well, I don't know anybody named Cage. And that sounds sporty, but like not too much pressure. Mm -hmm. It's like kind of cool and tough. And, you know, now he has a scar already because he had to get stitches. So, oh, I know. I mean, I when I look at the baby, uh, that baby, because I see videos and stuff, Uh is literally one of the happiest babies (laughs) I've ever fucking seen. But it's like me, you know, I'm a pretty happy person. Yeah, you are. Yeah, he's very cheery. He's very happy. Right now, he's very into giving kisses and hugs. Aww. It's like so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> he just like, he then goes like this. He goes, mm, like he like lifts his little chin up. It's pretty cute. Hey, guys, we're going to take another quick break to share some more favorite sponsors of ours. Dun, 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 dun. Manscaped. Ah. Dot- you guys, breaking news. Yes. Oh, my God. This important PCA is brought to you by Manscaped.com. This is your public service announcement and the news you've all been waiting for. The Manscaped engineering team has confirmed that they have successfully created the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, which is now available for purchase in the USA and Canada. This new trimmer was just released only moments ago. Oh, my God. And we are one of the first to get our hands <gasps> on it and share the news. Jo- 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 join over 2 million worldwide who trust Manscaped with exclusive offers for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping at manscaped.com slash tigerbelly. Weren't you just raving about the ceramic blade and skincare technology? I love it. You said it was almost too good to be true. Yeah. yeah. You guys, there's a new multifunction on and off switch that can engage a travel law created for people who like to travel. The Lawnmower 4.0 mm. gives you the ability to turn the 4000K LED LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. So years ago, um, when I was in high school, yeah, I made it a routine to to trim my you know my junk area. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what I would do, I would go to the you know local pharmacy or whatever, and I would get these disposable you know razors, uh, razors and stuff. Oh no! My, so basically, what ended up happening is my 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 area down there looked like a pirate's face <laughs> yeah, because it was like <laughs> it did. It would look like a pirate's face. Like it was always, you know what I mean, in battle. Slash. Slash and this and that. So anyway, you know, I prayed to God, you know what I mean, that I would, that I would do this. And um, (laughs) I, then all of a sudden I do this podcast and we get, you know, a free, you know, Manscaped razor and the Lord had answered my prayers. There you guys go. The moral of the story is if you're still trimming your face with your ball trimmer, it's time to make some changes, guys. Yeah. Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com slash tiger belly. Get, once again, that's get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com slash tiger belly. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com slash tiger belly. <laughs> I have another story. Go oh ahead. God, dear God. <laughs> is it a long one or is it a quick one? Pretty long. Okay. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Stop. Manscaped. Bespoke post. Mm. I love Box of Awesome, guys. And um, I love this company, Bespoke, because, um, you know, whenever they send me something, I know it's the ho- highest quality product. This knife, right, I got from Bespoke, right? This is the coolest, highest quality. You can just tell everything is manufactured in the highest precision. You know what I mean? And then I love this. Um, weekender th- bag. This weekender bag. You know, I, it's like, you know, because, f- you, you know, I love... Uh, to um, solve crimes on the weekends, <laughs> like like um, Sherlock Holmes. That's you. And I have all my stuff in here. Also, this spring, as you get back outdoors to explore, take Bespoke Post on all of your adventures with a new lineup of essential Box of Awesome collections for guys, guaranteed to upgrade your life. Whether you're out taming the wilderness or taking your home bar to pro-level heights, Bespoke Post only sends guys the best stuff every month. No matter what you're into, Box of Awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear, Mm -hmm. Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. 
what box look cool to you guys? I love the. I've gotten week the weekender mm -hmm. heirloom level carry all bag. I have the Survivor Hardy bushcraft knife in leather sheet. That's the one that Bobby just showed uh -huh. you. And I also have the Explore hiking and camping oh, set. Mm -hmm. Close it up, bud. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box of awesome for you. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code belly at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com code belly for 20% off your first box. Enjoy the rest of the show. Is the it strangers in the, you know. For a split <laughs> second earlier George had thought you were married to Will Sasso. Oh. Oh yeah. Silver face. Like a, yeah. Yeah. No. Nope. I'll take that. Like no. Will I think Sasso. he does. Will in Sasso. real life, in Quickly. real life Quickly. he doesn't look like he does not look like that in real life. I think what he does looks he look like, like the guy from life? The Americans, but with a shaved head. A little. Oh, yeah, I, I find him to be very cute. Yeah, thank you. No, I really do. Yeah. I like his face. Yeah, he's got. He's a face. got one of those like, um, you know, I always refer to it as if I was in a concentration camp. <laughs> You know Someone who'd help you. Yeah, like one of the, like if I was in the you know where the Japanese were in those camp. internment internment camps. Yeah, and one or two white people would, I assume, mm -hmm. would sneak up to the fence and like put like sandwiches. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? He's like your your yeah. your husband's like one. Of, he, yeah. you guys are married now, right? No, we're not married. You gonna get married? I don't know. Yeah, we're on this. I feel like yeah. I was like you know most of it is because he's a Patriots fan and I feel like he's won enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to give you a ring as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. But no, I mean, we've talked about it, but we just decided to have a baby first because I'm old, you know? And All like, right. It was just kind of like, this is a little bit more pressing. And so we decided to do that. So is it because, you know, I've, I'm, I don't know why, but I, I have like a clock ticking mm -hmm. and I want a baby now. Oh, his clock's ticking, not mine. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. My wow. clock's ticking. And um, let me ask you something as a friend. Mm hmm. Is it worth it? Are you being serious? Because you did that thing where you, you, you did your actor thing with me, where you're pretending to be serious, but I don't think you. Are. Okay, I'll, I'll do it. I'll ask again. <laughs> okay. I'll fucking ask again. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's not on a podcast anymore. This is real. Okay. Yeah. And we'll turn yeah. Off, we'll turn off the cameras. Okay. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um. Sarah, I've known you for 19 years, and um, I honestly, like, we don't really hang out that much, but we see each other often. I know a lot, I think somewhat a, a, a lot about you. I should, should, I should know more, but I do know enough to know that um, I trust you, and I really do, and I think that in terms of the, the business that we're in is filled with a lot of stuff. A lot of sc scoundrels, hmm. people that I don't really trust. Um, and there are people like you, and there are people um, that I know that um, I trust implicitly. Will Sasso would be one of them. Mm -hmm. He just has one of those things, you know what I mean? That you could, Eric Stone Street's another yeah. guy, you know what I mean? That I, I trust. love Eric. Yeah. And um, I've, I want a baby, and I'm asking as a friend um, is it worth it? Yes. Okay. It is worth it. I would put my stuff back on. I thought it would be funny to say no, but I, just, yeah, yeah. I changed my mind when I realized how <laughs> yeah. serious you were I would put my being. stuff back on real quick. I would say, uh, also for you, the clock is ticking because like the older your sperm gets, the higher the chance of autism, so you have to be careful about that. But My cum is very young. <laughs> I'm old, but my cum is very young. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I, I have a little uh, mic microscope at home mm -hmm. upstairs, I mean. This is where mm -hmm. I live. My, my bad. And every time I come, I look, right? And, and they're just, you know yeah. what I mean? They're into it. Spring okay. break. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I would just say, I, uh, I think the more pressing thing is just like you get, they're exhausting. And so I think the older you get, the harder it becomes because uh, they're so exhausting. It just sounds like you're talking me out of it. No, no, no. What I was going to say is that. You don't think I'd be a good father? I was, no, I think you'd be a great father. Actually. Be honest with me. Are you doing do acting? Are you acting? Or are you are you Sarah Tiana? No, this is why I think you'd be a great father. Oh, give because me you're fun. There we go. Um, you are spontaneous, <laughs> which you have to be with children. Exactly. Um, you're reliable, and uh, you are <laughs> you genuinely <laughs> care. You are reliable. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the rebuttal after this. You I want to hear your rebuttal. You genuinely care See, about people and things, and you remember things about people. And I think, I think you would teach a kid, but also not be so, but not be like 
a parent that's like such a hoverer. Like you would let them be a kid. I'm and a hoverer. On a helicopter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Daddy. And I'm glad she said that because I, I'm going to look at you now, okay? I'm glad she said that because... Um, remember, remember when she said it was exhausting? <laughs> I, I don't know, okay. but can I just say something? Remember how much you love your sleep. You treasure your sleep. I, I love sleeping. Okay. Can I say something? Okay, remember okay. how you almost had your, our dog was choking two weeks ago? <laughs> and after uh, uh, I said not to feed it, it has no teeth. Don't feed it that hot dog. And you fed it the hot dog and then the dog started choking. Do you remember that? Do, can, I, can I ask you something? Do you remember that I'm a human being? <laughs> <laughs> and do you, do you also remember that I have frailties and I, I make mistakes as human beings do? Mm-hmm. Okay. And can I say something else? All right. You know, I, I'm tired of being judged as a human. Just let me. I know it doesn't seem clear, right? It's, but I feel like I'm, my back is against the wall. It's going to get clear. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it clear, okay? It's going to get clear. So it's clear. like, you know, yeah, based on, you know, if you look at my behavior and who I am as a human, as a regular guy in society, right? Maybe, you know what I mean? There's, I need a lot of improvements, right? And maybe I do have a lot of character defects and frailties and things. But if you look at me as a comedian, right, it, I'm bumped up, I think, a little, right? So in terms of in comedy, you know, I have to admit, I've helped a lot of comics. I have, I'm generous. Very I'm very generous. Very generous. Very. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm very generous. I do love that about you. Okay, I'm generous. Um, I really fundamentally root for the fucking, you know what I mean? Uh, the underdog, mm-hmm. which is a good trait, I think. And um, I think at the end of the day, I- I'm a good person. You are a good person. Yeah. You know? So um, what do you think? <laughs> yeah. I-, I think all of those things. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I also want to state a few facts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm like curious as to what's holding you back. Yeah, yeah. Did you or did you not almost set this whole house on fire four times in the last six months? Yes. Okay. Human. Did hum- you or did human? You, did you or did you not cause at the very least two choking incidents with our animals? Do you or do you not yes. wear a seatbelt? Yes. No, I don't. But yes. I, 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 when we were driving yesterday, you go, put the seatbelt on. I put it on. I will tell you that having a child makes you think about your own mortality way more. I think before I had a baby, I wasn't really afraid of anything. I'd be like, I, my, you know, if I was like, oh, if I had to choose how to die, I would do it yeah. in a plane crash because I know I'd pass out. And then mm. I'd probably be in first class. I'd probably be drinking. <laughs> my family would get money from the airline. Like everybody wins, you know. But like now I'm like terrified driving. I'm like, if I get hit by a car and I can't go home and see my son like I've never been I've never had to think so much about someone else and that's what a child forces you to do it that's forces the most, you to stop being selfish that's the most compelling argument I've ever heard oh I did, it's actually you now I want a baby today because anything I will do anything for this man to care more about his safety that that's how I know that's the thing yeah. is I know and, and this is the truth okay mm-hmm. I know when I look at the baby, when it comes out of the choo-choo, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And it, it's slimy and it's, or whatever it does, you know what I mean? You know? Classic. It, right? And I'm holding it, right? And it, and it looks at me, right? And I look at it. I know that like five or six things will forever change within me. Mm-hmm. Number one, I'll have an instant connection, right? Because I just love the little things, mm-hmm. you know, right? Number two... I know that I just have no motivation. You know what I mean? I I know that a kid would motivate me. You know what I mean? I believe that as well. Because you can see it in my sobriety. If I okay, let me say something. When I'm dr- relapsed or I'm drinking, I don't stay out that 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 out there that long, right? After three or four months of using drugs and this and that, even if I have everything, like I relapsed in this house, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't really lose everything. I mean, you threatened to leave. I did. Didn't work. It didn't work, <laughs> right? And then you went to the I'm therapy. I'm obsessed with you. It turns out I'm obsessed with yeah, you. Yeah, right. So, you know, I didn't really lose anything, but what I could see is like my gut says, you know what I mean? If you go down this path, right, it, it's not going to be good, right? So you might as just nip it in the butt right now, right? Mm-hmm. I just have that internal thing about me, right? I think that's, I think a kid would do that for me. I would start doing yo- yoga again. I would do, use the Peloton, and I, you know what I mean? You know. I will say, though, that it doesn't happen right away. I thought it would happen when you first get, you're like, oh, my God, I, you know, 
And I talk about it on stage, like how it makes me think like The Bachelor is like why it works. I'm like, when you're trapped in a house with a man like all day, you're like, I think yeah. I love him. I don't know. I think <laughs> I do. He's here for the right reasons, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I want to spend the rest of my life. It's only been a couple weeks. But it took a couple of my, and that it could be because I was on so much medication because mm. I had to have a C-section because my oh. baby was ab- abnormally large. Yeah. And uh, so you're kind of drugged, you know, like it takes a while. And then like when they start looking you in the eye, once they can actually see, because it takes like a month to two months before they can actually like recognize you. They really just know your smell and your sounds at the beginning. Uh-huh. And once you start seeing them like bond with you and like look you and like need you and they start making noises or laughing at you or smiling when they see you and like just wanting you to hold them. Like when when somebody else holds them and then they cry and then you hold them and they stop. Yeah. It's like all these little things add up. And so all Dude, the you just hard- fucking sold it for me. <laughs> you just fucking sold because he just had a baby. Well, how long? A month ago. A month ago. Is he recognizing? He's just starting to make eye contact. Yeah. Right, and it, would you get those feelings? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's He's, it's yeah. hard, and and the nights can be very hard and long. But you know, thank goodness there are two of you, and you can switch off. You can also hire a night nurse. We're gonna hire that. We have a girl. Hire tons of people. We have we, have a, we have a girl. I'm ta- like people can help you with lots of stuff, and yeah. and your family will want to help. And like, there's so many people that that always want to help and hold. Everybody wants to hold a baby. I'm gonna get a night nurse. Yeah, that really helps too because yeah. obviously sleep is pre- like people go, oh, you must. And I sleep, you know, eight, nine hours a night, but it's still not enough. You know, yeah. when people say like, oh, you just you don't get enough sleep. They mean 20 hours. Because all day, he's like now he's walking. He's just exhausting. And all he wants to do all day is like play with the ball or play outside yeah. and like. And, and I'm just constantly watching him to make sure he doesn't go close to the dog. The dog doesn't close, you know, don't yeah. put that in your mouth. And so that it becomes tedious. But then, like, I was like, I'm never having another one. This is it. Just the one. I don't want to, I, I don't want to play, I want to play zone. I don't want to have to play man to man, you know. <laughs> and um, and now I'm like, eh, I can really? have another one, I think. Really? Yeah. Isn't that something? But I can't convince my boyfriend. <laughs> He was the one that wanted it, and now he's like, no. It's too exhausting. Yeah, yeah. Wow. He's always going to fall off of something, you know? He's yeah. always like... It's like he's like a circuit bear, like constantly, where you're like, don't step on that. Don't jump on that. What are you doing? Don't dive. Oh, like he wow. He started standing, and then he was like, I'm going to do it on chairs. Like, no, no, no. Oh, wow, wow. No. Yeah. Just the floor is fine, you know? Wow. There's little things. It's It's not easy. But it's very rewarding. Like all the goods like completely outweigh the bad. And people would tell me that. And until you have, I mean, until you have one, you just won't. A big part of me was like, you know, I I was always very maternal anyway. I was like a mother to everyone at the comedy store, basically. I took care of so many (laughs) broke comics there, you know. But like, I think a big part of me was just like, as a woman... Like, I feel like I'm able to do this incredible magic trick with my body. And I feel like I'd be doing myself a disservice yeah. to not try to do my magic. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But also, but I, I also want you to focus on your career as well. Mm-hmm. And I want you to go on the road. I want you to make money mm-hmm. and all that stuff as well. You know? But I don't want to be on the road. Like, I don't make money on the road. I make money in the writer's room. And I uh, get a pension and I get health insurance yeah, and dental. Yeah. <laughs> and... When I do the road, like, I'll do it with Tosh. Like, that's who I go out with, you know? Because our kids are exactly one year apart. They were born on the same day. Wow. What's he like on the road? He's incredible. He's just like you. He's incredibly generous. I love Daniel. Super fun. I love him. We hang out. Now our babies hang out all the time. Oh, wow, It's so crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's just so weird, like, the way the world is, you know? I mean, And I got every single thing that... I mean, his son had... I shouldn't have said his name. Sorry. You'll have to cut that out. Let's take that out, yeah. But I... He he gave me all the hand me downs from his son, you know, like everything my son had is from him, you know, like fancy stuff. Like, is this son older than one year? One year old. One year old. Exactly one year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so it's great. Like now he has someone, you know, that he can hang out with and play with and chase around. He's another one, Daniel Tosh. Mm -hmm. That when he made it, sometimes when people make it, I I kind of (laughs) go, yeah, why God? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm And then they get bigger, and, b- and then you have to drive by their billboards, and you're like, "Why?" <laughs> and he's one of those guys where I went. It does no. I just Sebastian's the same way. 
where it's just like, you deserve it. Mm-hmm. You're uber talented, mm-hmm. nice guy, mm-hmm. no weird feelings at all. No. It's the weird ones. You know what I mean? That I just kind of go. <laughs> like who? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I've I, na- I've na- I, I have named them. I have named them. Yeah. yeah. We won't I like do it to, today, though, okay? I'm not going to do today, but I like to start fires. I know. <laughs> I heard. Kalila yeah, yeah. told me about the yeah, house. Yeah, I like to start. Yeah. <laughs> I, but yeah, I mean, I think that there are a lot of people that I uh, haven't enjoyed performing with, but you know, Daniel and yourself are like by far my favorites. Like it was fun w- working with you because um, number one, I remember we went to San Antonio once, mm-hmm. right? And we walked the around. Elmo. Remember we oh, walked yeah. around, and the then um, the river walk, the river the walk. River. Yeah, you and I were at the river walk, and then you would sell your um, the cat. Oh yeah, that's why I said. I, I wish I would have known you had a little puppy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brought some bow ties. My mom still makes the cat bandanas and dog bow ties. Oh, is it really? Catbandana.com if anyone <laughs> Do you do you sell on the road still or no? Oh yeah. Oh wow. When I would go on the road and I would make ones for that city's uh sports teams. Oh Aww. wow. So we would we would look at my schedule and my mom would make them for like oh, all the Minnesota oh, teams or you know, all the Is she proud of you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I make fun of them and I act like they're not that, but they're very proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're they would they. I have to tell them not to sit in the front row. Oh right, right, yeah, right, right. Because yeah, they get yeah, very. Yeah. And my dad will stand next to me uh, after the show and like shake every. He'd be like, "I'm Sarah's dad." Like oh. he introduces himself oh. to everyone. <laughs> you know? like, very cute. I yeah. love that. They're very, very supportive. Very happy all the time. You know. So at the end of our thing, you, you first of all, you were a delight. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. And it just so easy. <laughs> That's you know, so a lot nice. of times it's not that easy. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. We've had ones where it was like, that was hard. <laughs> you know. You have to do a lot of work. Yeah. Or just you just don't get anything back. Mm-hmm. But I could talk to you forever, and we're gonna have you back on. But um, at the end of our podcast, we do a thing called unhelpful advice, <laughs> and people have emails for us, and you can help them or not. Okay. So go ahead. Unhelpful advice. With go ahead, Sarah, Jules. You can take Tiana. it. Hold on, hold on. Let Jules take uh the puppy. Puppy. Oh, this is a bad idea. This is to the bring n- him in here. This is the night nurse. I'm so sorry. This is our night nurse. <laughs> she looks very competent and helpful. Yeah. She's in high school. Oh, wow. She Thanks, almost Jules. she almost broke uh, I didn't. one of my poppy's other dog's paw today. No, she didn't. <laughs> You're projecting. You're no. projecting. She's so helpful. She's my She's the greatest. She's my little helper in the house. Okay. But go ahead, Gil. But I'm just saying, let, let me just say this to cut this out. Is if I had done that, I would have gotten in a real big trouble. A lot of <laughs> so much more. If I had done that, it's mayhem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She does it. Nah, she's you know, anyway. That's another reason you need a kid, so you can blame stuff on the kid. Like the kid did uh-huh. it. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah. That's the a, baby, add that in. The baby is the one that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that threw the dog over. That's there. not my shit. <laughs> <laughs> <You know what laughs> <Yeah>. I mean? <laughs> the baby made me relapse. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes. The go baby's ahead. drinking. Why can't I? <laughs> <laughs> my eighty year, uh, my eighty year. Do the unhelpful advice again. Unhelpful advice oh, with wow. Sarah Tiana. Impressive. My eight Second year city, old, Chicago. All right, man. My eight-year-old <laughs> father died last year. Mm-hmm. And this living trust, he explicitly left everything to me and named my three siblings as getting zero. Before he died, he verbally reminded me specifically to make sure one sister received zero. He wasn't wealthy. About 60000 was left for me. I feel guilty for not giving some to my sister, but I loved my father, and she abandoned him for the last year of his life. Please alleviate me of my guilt, or not. Okay, let me get this straight. Because, okay, so his dad dies. Yep. Left him 60 grand. All the her. money. Is it him or her? It is a... Oh, it's a him. We'll call him James. James. So James got 60 grand. He has other siblings? Yes. One? Uh, three. 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 They got nothing? Nothing. And and he's not going to give them anything? Uh, he would like to. Uh, the dad also made it very specific for one sister to really not, not get, get anything. anything. Okay. I have. I mean, I have an answer. Well, I just have a suspicion, not an answer. What's your, what's your, what's your suspicion? <laughs> My suspicion is that he wants to stick it and blame, like you do. You want to <laughs> stick it. You want to stick the blame onto the fact that the dad wanted them to have zero and pretend like he's respecting the wishes because he himself wants to keep the sixty grand. 
Mm-hmm. So he wants. Mm-hmm. That's not it. I think. I think that's it. He, that's 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 because that. really all he could do is he owns the money now. He's the inheritor. He give it. Yeah. He could just give it if he really wanted to. If he felt so much guilt, he could. That's mm. yeah. But then you're not respecting the wishes of. L- listen, the okay. wishes of your listen. I told you my cousin many years ago called me and he goes, um, you don't have kids. I go, yeah. And he goes, you're doing really well. Congratulations. I go, thank you. And he goes, um, I can't literally feed my kids. So I go, all right, well, see you later. I mean, I don't know what <laughs> you know I mean. And he goes, can I have 10 grand? So I went, you know, what? I got to give this guy 10 grand. You know what I mean? Only one time. That's it. But I'm going to give it to him. And my brother told my dad I was giving one of my cousins ten grand. My dad called me when we. My, this is my dad, by the way. Oh, he's well, dead. Amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's in here. He's a that's, he's a pygmy. <laughs> this is his condo. That's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very small apartment. <laughs> you got for him. Yeah, yeah. So, um, my dad. So my dad called me and he goes, "You can't give him anything." I go, "Why? Because his dad, my, my uncle, fuck me over." So many, uh, mm. you know what I mean? You can't. So I had to call this cousin back and go, I can't give it to you. And my cousin, right, you know, he threatened to kill everyone in my family. He was that desperate because I told him that I would do it, right? Oh. But I abided by my father's, mm. you know what I mean? Wishes yeah. wishes. yeah, but why do the kids have to pay for that? Mm. It's, like, the, okay, your dad had beef with somebody that's w- not him, the m- person that you're giving money to. Maybe 100 years from now, our grandkids are going to pay for the environmental mess that we've, we're leaving them. You know what I mean? People I just pay. I People would, pay. Uh, if I felt guilty about having the money and I felt like it depends on how, if he thinks his brothers and sisters are deserving. Yeah. Because if they're not, then don't give them anything, you know. But if they are and you feel guilty about it, maybe you don't have to give them money. Maybe you can just buy them something they need mm-hmm. with the money that you have. Yeah, but if the that's sister... That's the best way to do it. Yeah, that's not sis- technically giving them yeah. money. You're just buying them a gift. But he's saying the sister abandoned the dad. That the last doesn't year get ever- anything. <laughs> so that one gets nothing. She gets nothing. Zero. What do you think? Maybe... And let's see, if you're lying, James, yeah. first of all, if you're fuck, look at me. If I would, this is what I, if that woman had kids, I'd give the kids stuff. Yeah. Yes. That's what, yeah. That's Not her. Could I finish mine? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> James. James. If you're lying, listen, if you're lying, then go fuck yourself. But if you're telling the truth and your dad really did say that and your sister did abandon your dad the last year of his life, right, then you can't give her any money. That's all I'm going to say. That makes sense. Give us another one. Hey, guys. We're going to take a really quick break to share one of our favorite sponsors on this podcast. Better help. No, better help. Mm. Better help. I, honestly, George and everyone in the room, um, this is one endorsement or ad that I do that I really I almost get teary-eyed because I really believe in it so much. And it's helped our life. It's so helped much. our life. You know, it's um, it's not a this is, better help is not a crisis line. George, it's not self-help. It is professionally counseling done securely online. Kalila and I and the people in the house have all used this service. We love it. Um, BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can connect in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient and you can start communicating in under 48 hours. Send a message to your counselor anytime. That's my favorite feature, Mm. the journal, because you get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. They have licensed professional counselors who are specialized in depression, stress, anxiety, family matters, babe. Grief, trauma for it, Bobby and I. Here's another thing, babe. It's available worldwide. Yeah. It's the glow, baby. That's what worldwide means. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. And um, anything you share is confidential. It's convenient, professional, affordable. You guys really have to check out the testimonials posted daily on their site. Please, guys, tell them more, Gilbert. This is the best. If you want to start living a happier life today, as a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at BetterHelp.com belly. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash belly. Enjoy the rest of the show. So nearly a decade ago, I fell in love with someone a few months prior to moving across country. The love was mutual, but neither of us wanted a long-distance relationship at the time. There was a lot of ups and downs, but one thing remained— 
we still loved each other. And we still do now, but we're both in serious relationships. It's been on my mind like crazy lately, and I don't know what to make of it. To be with him would be a total life restart, and it would ri- I would risk so much. But I often wonder about the potential reward. What do you think? Bridges of Madison County. That's the answer. <laughs> Bridges of Madison County. You see that movie? Remember that last scene? What's it? Clint? 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 He's mm-hmm. Clint yeah. Eastie? Yeah. You're, yeah, he's in the car. <laughs> the last he sees her in the rearview mirror, right? And that's a, he's in love with her, right? But she's married, right? And he drives away. That's it. I think also sometimes the idea of someone <laughs> is way right. more. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that. Yeah, but it that's true. I think people think like if I was with this person, it would solve all the problems because mm. you're projecting all the bad things from your own relationship and thinking they won't be the same in that other relationship. Mm-hmm. But remember, you are the common denominator. Like you might be bringing, you might be the cause of those problems and bring them with you. So I would say, don't do it. Do you have a love though? I, Outside of your the one no. that, the one that got away no there's not one guy no me neither no me either I oh, always wait what no. I always yeah, me either I, that doesn't sound pursue no me either it. me either now it's angry <laughs> me I, either I agree I also think like I read this article where <laughs> I don't know if it was on Vice where they're like careful with how the pandemic has affected your thought processes about your relationship because people are really looking forward to that hot girl summer Mm -hmm. and getting back out there and living a life and you know breaking it off with the person they've stuck it out with through the pandemic and i also think it's like you have so much time to like ponder You've had a lot of time to ponder. Like I was starting digging through photos, having <laughs> feelings again for people I hadn't seen in like 10 years. But that's not real. Mm-mm. This nightmare is real. <laughs> this is the reals. Yeah. The yeah. foundation it's is your, deep and solid. Yeah, I think your imagination can really carry. Yeah, and it's very, it's, yeah, it's, uh, I always think of, when I think about like excess in that way, in a very like lustful way, forgetting how horrible the actual real part of the relationship was. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to show you something, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is... Oh, wait, hold on. I'm not really lost soul for any ex. So this is my this is my screensaver mm-hmm. for my phone, okay? This is a, a, this is a drawing of Kalila. There's another drawing of Kalila, right? But this is Kalila as a kid, mm-hmm. right? And I always look at this, okay? And I know that... These Kalilas on here, right? When I look at it, especially when I'm, because tra- I've traveled some, you know what I mean? I always look at it and I go, it's just like a knowing, right? That this is, there's a connection there. It's even unexplainable almost, right? But I know that we were meant to be with each other. I know, and I'm not, I, you know what? I have to be honest with you, I should be more appreciative of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's very rare, honestly. I should be more appreciative. In this that. day and age, it is pretty rare for people who are right for each for your person and yeah. you to to find each other because there are so many options out there. I think that's the other part that kills relationships is that you know there are seven billion people on the planet and we mm-hmm. have access to every one of them. Like you know, back in the day, people would be married for like mm-hmm. sixty years, and you're like, yeah, there were like three choices in town. You know, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, you yeah, took yeah. The, be- the lesser of two evils or whatever. But like now I feel like we have so many options. We are inundated with so many, you know, choices. And it's like the the Cheesecake Factory menu. I never know what I'm going to uh, eat there I because there's way that. too many pages. They even have a Thai option. Right. It's, but it's in tough. and out, you always know what you want because yeah. it's yeah. limited menu, Animal you know? style, yeah. And so I think when you do find true love in the world that we're in now, it is something that you really have to hold on to and make work. And I I don't think that like marriages and relationships should be work. I think they should be like a garden that needs to be tended. Like Mm -hmm. you're just kind of like every day you kind of do a little bit. You don't have to, you know, replant. Yeah. You You shouldn't have to. Can we change the soil? (laughs) I also have an 18th century view of a relationship as well. How? I'll t- explain myself. 18th century. You know, uh, back in the We've day. We've done 18th century yeah, like, role play. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> Heary, heary, yay. Uh-huh. So here's... I've been a shoemaker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's been the aristocrat. I, I want you to churn butter, though, next time. Be the lady that churns butter. So um, let me... 
So back in the day, you know, a, a guy would look at, be with a woman, not just necessarily for breeding purposes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things like, can she, you know what I mean? Can she tend the, you know what I mean, the fields? You mean can she, she could, hold a fort down? Yeah, she can, can she, you know what I mean, plow? She Can she do other things? There's other considerations. Survival, you know what I mean, as well. And for me, it's like when I look at my beautiful, you know what I mean, <laughs> Filipino butterfly. Wow. Right? You know, I there's a lot of things that I consider, mm -hmm. right? Mainly, it's like um, we work well together as well on this podcast. We've created things together, um, and um, she hates this word, and I'm not going to use it. I'm gonna the the only is we're God, you hate this word. So please don't say roommates. No, no, we're not roommates. Okay, so we're fine. Then say the word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're my lover. I love you. But there is also a trust there and a friendship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Friendship of is course. the course. The friendship is the word. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I uh, love that word. I don't mind that. Okay. Word at all. And so I just can. You know, for me, it's like before when I was in my twenties, like I don't want to stick my pee pee yeah. in that hole. You That's know what I mean? Your twenties are for. Yeah, and just uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, all that. Whatever. Oh, sorry, my bad. Yeah. A little too far. But yeah. But then as you get older, you know, I mean, you just consider more. There's more consider anyway. Yeah, I think I think that's important. You have to grow as a human being. Mm -hmm. I think it takes sometimes makes maybe takes a little longer for men to grow because men don't have a sense of urgency. Like women are planners, and we're like, by this age, I'm going to be like that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think, I don't know. I, I I realized like I used to have all these deal breakers and stuff that I would like do it like a checklist, you know. Even like now, like my voicemail says you've reached Sarah Tion and Matthew Stafford. And because he is my favorite football player. And when guys would go, do you have a roommate? I'd be like, nice to meet you. Because like, if you don't know who Matthew Stafford yeah. is, there's no reason for us to talk. It was like, really? It was like this, like Rams, baby. Yeah. It was just like this immediate thing where I was, yeah. it was like, <laughs> so if I, if I left a message, you know, I just Bobby Lee and Wayne Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> if they didn't know who Wayne Rooney was. Yeah. Gay, like, can't, be <laughs> can't be friends. Yeah. But I realized that, like, <laughs> but when I met my boyfriend, I was, he literally checked off every deal. He had all of them. He had a roommate. His car was a mess, his, which meant, you know, that means your room's a mess, which means your life's a mess, you know, like all these things. And then I realized that, like, the things I thought I wanted were not what I wanted. Right. And then what I realized was, like, I just want someone that I can respect and brag about and look up to. Mm -hmm. And he has all those things. He's someone I'm proud of constantly, that I'm impressed by. Yeah. Uh, and like, I can always brag about him. And I think as a woman, that is like really essential for us, you know, yeah, especially, yeah, yeah. you know, like, especially in this day and age, because like, you know, especially when you're kind of in charge and like a strong woman, finding a man that's comfortable with that yeah. and allows you to be that makes you respect them even more. I, agree. Uh, I am yeah. that. Yeah. Ooh. You are somebody. She I am brag that. About. <laughs> oh, real quick. I want to mention, I forgot to mention this oh, real quick. I'm sorry. I don't forget. Kalila and I and saw a documentary that her name called you didn't finish it you fell asleep called Crib Camp. I watched fifth like ninety percent of it. Crib yeah, Camp. Crib Camp, and uh, Brock and um, Michelle. Michelle Obama produced it, and it got, it got also nominated for an Academy Award. Mm -hmm. It was about um, a camp in the early seventies mm -hmm. um, that started in the sixties. Well, they actually started in the fifties. Of yeah, that's the documentary of. People with disabilities would go to this this camp, and it was like they, um, it was a bunch of hippies ran it, Hilarious. right? So there was the first time in their lives where they weren't being judged, right? They could not feel so self conscious. They they, they yeah they were not smoke cigarettes. They could smoke, make out. Fuck, they would make out, fuck, uh, finger blast, smoke weed, yeah, yeah. just yeah. be yeah. teenagers. Be teenagers, yeah. right? And it really was, and you know, I have to admit, um, in my not recently, but early on in my comedy career, I would make fun of Crips. No, <laughs> no, I would I would make fun of disabled people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not in a harsh way, but you know, anything goes in comedy or whatever in my mind. And it's like you know, I I'm no longer going to do that. Oh, that's you know nice. that that documentary really just kind of made me, you know, what I mean, respect. Because they were just, anyway, it was a really good documentary. That's good. I love I that. Highly, I highly suggest it. 
Um, anything you want to plug? Was it there? funny watching them have sex in wheelchairs? Was that? <laughs> they didn't have that footage, oh. but I would have jerked off. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, show it, show it. You know what I mean? Sure, sure, sure. Um, Do a wheelie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pop and a it, chub and a wheelie <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. Fun. Do you want to want to plug anything? No, just catbandana.com. Oh, catbandana. Don't you have a you have a pod? Not anymore. We stopped doing. What was well, it? we were doing. Yeah, we're thinking. It was called um, "This Week in the '90s," and we would talk about things that happened that week in the '90s. Oh, uh, we were obsessed. Who are you with. doing with? My boyfriend. Yeah. Oh. Over the pandemic, and then I started working on the after party, the Netflix show with Spade, and then it would just became like too much. Are you still working with Spade? Yeah, I still work with him, but we're on hiatus right now. So, I don't. I, ha- I have to say about him. Um, because you know, I hung out with him last week, went to dinner. Um, oh, that's nice. And then he the loves couple, going to dinner. Yeah, I know. And a couple of weeks before that, I went to his house. And we watched the fights. Um, he, you know, if you were gonna have a boss, <laughs> right? Yeah. One of the nicest guys that you could have as a boss. One of the best. Uh, yeah. Be honest. You, if you were my boss, I would say the same thing. But yeah, he is uh, because you're also very nice and generous, and you know, He's, I when I got that job. I had just found out I was pregnant and I was like, mm. I had like 26 weeks on the road coming up and I was like, what am I going to do? Like, I can't fly this much. And I had had a miscarriage the year before. So I was really worried about something flying so much and that happening and like all this stuff. And, uh, so I told them, I was like, listen, nobody knows this yet, but like, I have to tell you, like I'm pregnant, you know, so like I can only work for you for nine months, you know, and uh, they're like, oh, that's fine. Like, who cares? You know, and Spade was like, do you care if we talk about it ever? And I'm like, sure. And then that became like the whole arc of the, sh- you know, not the whole arc. But yeah. We used it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. To the point where now people don't recognize me because I'm not pregnant. Like we we moved to Encino. We and my neighbor saw my lights out jacket. And she was like, oh, my God, we love that. We watched it every day. And I was like, oh, thanks. And. She was like, there was this pregnant girl on the show that was so funny. And I'm like standing there with the baby in my arm. I'm like, yeah, that's me. And she's like, no, no, no. She was like blonde. And she had like, she was like, and I'm like, no, 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 that's me. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. yeah. So she, he, but just like always let me like take time for appointments and, you know, like just like very generous, caring, like kind, incredible yeah. person. This is a, cons- I don't know what, I, I don't know what happened to him, but he's. You know, he's just unusually n- nice. Mm. He's also the only person I think, you know, like one of those guys that's like so willing to make fun of himself. And he's so generous with laughter. Like he wants you to kill all mm-hmm. the time. So he's very giving to like allow yeah, that's you what to I, yeah. kill. He yeah. wants you to kill. He's not nervous or afraid that like you're going to look better than him. You know, like he's just, he has a lot of confidence, but he also loves making fun of himself, which is so rare in late night too. Yeah, do you also worked with the cable guy, right? Oh, I worked with him a long time a long ago. ago. Oh, yeah. I worked on his website, but I didn't tour with him. Oh, you didn't tour with him? No, uh-huh. no, no, no. I've always wanted to meet him. Is he nice? So nice. Yeah, yeah. I've always yeah. wanted to meet that guy. Yeah, I went to his house in Nebraska. That's right. I remember you flying yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. And like riding his four wheelers and stuff. And his wife was like super pregnant at the time, but she was like shooting birds in the lake. <laughs> And yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, oh, oh, they, oh. they were like eating her fish or something. And she was all. What's his sick. real name? Larry. Dan. Larry Dan? Dan? No, Dan Whitney is his name. Oh, Dan Whitney. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Well, I have to say, um, you know, I'm I, I'm leaving town. But um, when you picked up yesterday and you said you would do this, um, it just made me so happy because, <laughs> um, you know, um, we just wanted a strong one. You know, we were going to do a solo, but we're like. Let's try to find somebody. As soon as your name came up, we we're like, "Hey, get, get her, get her!" <laughs> and we got you. And it, you have a show tonight? No, no, I'm off tonight. Okay. Yeah. So I want everyone in the room to give Sarah Tiana a round of applause, please. Oh, Woo! thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for having me. We went pretty long, huh? <laughs>